Okay, so I'm trying to figure out if I should get um, cell ping pingectomy surgery. Um, this is my fifth baby, and I will be scheduled for my fifth C-section on November 23rd, and I'm done. So I wanna make sure that, you know, this doesn't happen again, and, um, you know, we don't have any more surprises this baby was definitely a surprise we weren't we were already done before this baby came along and it was just a complete surprise this this pregnancy um is definitely our last so what um i've been thinking of is getting my tubes removed so a complete tubal removal and um, my husband um, was going to get a vasectomy as well and he was actually supposed to get he was supposed to get a vasectomy before we got pregnant with with this little guy um, but he just procrastinated and just never got it done and um, we weren't trying so we weren't trying to have any kids and it just ended up happening we were you know taking precautions to prevent it but obviously not enough <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about is basically what we're going to do for permanent birth control. So I was like really sure at one point that I was going to get just a complete tubal removal. Um, I was actually going to do that the, my last C-section. So my daughter, I had, I knew I was done then. Like I did not want any more kids. Four was enough. We were, we were done. Me and my husband talked about it. We didn't want any more kids. So, you know, we were happy with what we had. We were fine. And so I had talked to my OBGYN about it and, you know, she was telling me, you know, we should just do the tubal removal. Um, however, I just, I didn't feel comfortable at the time because I did read a lot of horror stories um, when I researched it because obviously I want to research what I'm doing and what I'm getting myself into and like what the risks are and stuff. And there was just a lot of bad stories that came up that really scared me. And so I decided against it. I was just like, okay, I'm not going to get it done. And we talked, you know, I talked to my husband and he said he would get the vasectomy done. So I thought, okay, you know, we'll just go that route instead. And, um, and then it, it didn't happen. He ended up not getting the vasectomy. So then here we are again with number five. So I definitely want to make sure that this is, um, you know, not going to happen again. And, uh, I won't be able to conceive uh, so I was definitely like felt like dead on sure this time around that I'm just gonna go ahead and do it I'm not gonna let the story scare me and I'm going to go ahead and get the tubal removal which is called a and I'm going to butcher this because I know I'm not, I'm not saying it right but like a sal a sal um, pingonectomy salpinectomy something like that salpingectomy um, is what it's called a bilateral salpingectomy and that's where they basically completely remove your uh, tubes. And um, so there's no like cauterizing or tying or anything like that of the tubes with a traditional tubal -like ligation. Uh, they just completely take them out. So there's less, less risk of you getting pregnant. It's supposed to be pretty, you know, I mean, nothing's really 100%. It, it is possible. I read stories, you know. Of women but it's very rare for a woman to get pregnant when she has a complete bilateral salpingectomy um, done so you know I was like okay good that's what I want because I just I don't want anything to happen again where there's just you know a surprise again I'm just so done you know I'm I'm 39 I'm gonna be 40 I have my kids I'm very happy with them and although I do love big families and I would love you know to have a huge family and um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to having another one. It's just too much. You know, it's just, I'm only one person. I'm only, you know, I can only handle it so much and financially, physically on my body, emotionally, everything is just enough, you know, at this point. So that's why we're definitely done. Um, you know, it, being pregnant is so uncomfortable and it's miserable for me. So I don't want to be pregnant. I don't want to have to go through any of that ever again. So basically that's where we're looking at permanent birth control options here. And um, I actually signed the form. So I talked to my doctor again and I didn't really look it up actually this time um, too much because again, I didn't want to scare myself. And last time 
she was kind of telling me, no, all those stories, like, you know, kind of trying to act like, you know, it, it has nothing to do. It's not related to the surgery at all. Um, but I just still didn't feel comfortable with it back then. And, um, since I got pregnant, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do it. And I'm just not going to read those stories. But then of course I'm like, you know, telling myself, you just do need to research it. You do need to make sure that this is something you want and, um, feel comfortable with the risk and all that. So again, I brought it up to my doctor and again, I didn't like her answer because she again was kind of telling me like acting like there's no risk at all. And I'm like, okay, there's gotta be risk. Like there's always a risk when you have a surgery, um, no matter what, you know? And so I asked her like, what are, what are the risks? And basically all she's telling me is that the only risk is, um, you know, bleeding, like during the surgery, like, you know, I can maybe have need a blood transfusion or something because, you know, it's an extra, um, thing obviously they're cutting into so that I can lose blood from so that was pretty much all she was telling me and I kept asking her like you're sure there's nothing else and I you know had read before that it can cause um you know uh menopause like premature menopause uh menopause for women and she was just like no no like it doesn't do any of that and completely just saying that like all these women are crazy pretty much. So that really didn't make me feel good that she wasn't, I just feel like she wasn't being all the way up with like honest about like the risk. And I'm like, there's gotta be something that could possibly happen. And like, that's the only thing she said is just like, you could bleed extra because you know, you're cutting into something else. That was it. That was the only risk. So I kind of was like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, take her word, listen and just do it. I just want to do it. Cause I, I just don't, ever want to be pregnant again. I don't want to have to risk being pregnant again. Um, and so I know that if my body just can't, you know, conceive again, then I'd feel like a lot better. And also from the last time with my husband, not ever getting it done, I can't force him to go get it done. I'm not going to force him, you know, so, um, I don't know if he's going to get it done or not. So then I'm, here we are in the same position, you know, possibly could get pregnant again. Uh, so I did sign the form. So the, the form was signed, I signed two different consent forms. And then when I was reading through the forms, like, there really wasn't anything on there either, which I felt like, why is it not showing any risk? Like, I feel like the doctor should thoroughly, um, you know, have you read the risk and sign on it. And um, the paper that I got did not say anything really about risk, just basically that I'm giving them consent to do the surgery. Um, so I was like 100% in my mind, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And um, then all of a sudden I was, you know, back of my mom was telling me, okay, let's just, just look it up a little bit more. And, um, and so I went and joined a Facebook group. And um, then now it basically changed my mind again. And now I decided not to get it done. Um, because again, it was the same thing when I was reading the other stories back with my other daughter when I wanted to get it done. Um, the stories were pretty high and I mean, they were mixed. I'm not saying that like every woman has a problem. There are a lot of women that are totally fine and everything goes great. Um, but then it seemed like there was a lot of stories and a lot of women that were complaining and saying that it ruined their life basically. And they wish they never done it. Um, and so that pretty much has scared me away from getting it done and now I really don't want to get it done anymore. Um, so, and I also looked it up and, and since this is such like a new, um, it's like, you know, a newer, I mean, it's not new, new, but it's like a newer procedure that women are getting done. You know, usually there's the tubal ligation. There's a lot of information more on that, but the whole, you know, complete removal. And that's why a doctor said she does. And, you know, when she's doing the C-section, so that's what she likes to do. That's what she's doing. Um, you know, it's something that it isn't really talked about. Or I can't really find, you know, a lot, a ton, a ton of information, like medically studies done on it, just women, what women's stories are. So I did find a website, like a medical, from a medical person, not just like, you know, because I want to hear both, both sides. I didn't want to obviously just go off of a, a bunch of women or just go off of what the medical side says. I wanted to hear them both and kind of make a decision based on that. I did find like, what are the risks? And then um, the risk were saying that you can go into early menopause. This is from a medical, you know, website, not from just somebody seeing it, um, that you can go into early menopause because um, what happens is if they, uh, you know, when they cut the um, 
tubes completely out that are attached to the ovaries, it could cause the ovaries to lose that blood supply. And then if they lose the blood supply, then you go into early menopause. And, um, and I have read a lot of stories that women are saying they, they've went into early menopause following the procedure. Um, and just other, you know, scary things. And menopause is not fun. I feel like I'm way too young to be in, trying to enter menopause. And I just don't want any, I don't want any medical issues. I don't want to have this done. And now I have, great, now I can't have kids. But, you know, now I have all these medical issues. Um, and so it's a risk, you know. It's not saying that it'll happen to me. Maybe it'll be fine, you know. Um, but I, I don't feel like I want to risk it because there's just been horrible stories of women saying that they regret it every day, um, that they're in a lot of pain, that their periods are so heavy, like they have to go to the ER, um, and just like a ton of stuff that is very scary. Um, that is like kind of like you can't do anything about as far as I know. It just sounds like they're just stuck with this horrible pain now forever um, and dealing with these you know super heavy periods and it's not just like oh it's just a heavy period I mean they're having to like go to the ER um, you know a lot of this a lot of these women and it's caused them debilitating pain like you know and and they're they're having periods you know um, longer for like two weeks straight and stuff and uh, and like I said, the menopause symptoms and, um, so it just, it just sounded really horrible and scary. And when I brought that up to my doctor, what I don't like is she was just pushing it all off. Like, like the women were crazy and they didn't know what they were talking about. And, um, that, you know, all these women, oh, which they just have heavy, heavier periods because obviously they, you know, have been pregnant and they weren't used to it and now they have it and, you know, and then also they're older and, and I'm just like, I don't buy that. I just feel like that's a bunch of BS, honestly. And, um, like she's just discounting all these women and there's a lot of stories, like a lot, not just like, okay, there was one or two or, you know, there wasn't that many. I just feel like there was a pretty high ratio of women complaining about it and the after effects and then women saying everything's fine, you know? So, um, so basically, I think I've decided not to get that done. Um, and what we planned on again is that I'm just gonna go on birth control and uh, my husband's gonna get the vasectomy. So, but this time around, basically he, you know, pretty much has to get the vasectomy done. Um, you know, he's he knows that he has to get it done, so we're, we're planning for that. But then again, you know, I don't know, it's his body. It's up to him. He can not go. I can't force him to go. So just hoping that he, he will eventually get that done. Um, or really abstinence is kind of what's going to happen because I'm just not going to deal with that again. I mean, it's my body that has to go through being pregnant and dealing with everything. So, um, not going to, to let that happen. Um, so that is pretty much what, you know, we have decided to just do or what I have decided to do. Uh, is just not get the surgery done. So I'm going to withdraw my consent. I just don't feel comfortable. I don't, like I said, I don't like, I don't feel like she's being upfront. My doctor's being upfront and real with me about the risk. And that really scares me off because I feel like she's just either, I don't know, really doesn't know or bearing the truth or something. I just don't like it, you know? So I wish I would feel better knowing that like it was, um, you know, she was actually giving me the real risk of it and not just counting all these women's stories. So it says it right there that salpinectomy, I'm totally butchering that, but it can cause early menopause, onset early menopause if the blood flow is cut from the ovaries. So why is my doctor telling me that there's like no risk and it basically virtually no risk and that it does not cause or it cannot cause early menopause hmm that is very questionable and alarming to me that she is totally saying that it's fine i would just love to actually hear all of your thoughts out there uh if you actually got this surgery done you know if it did affect you negatively positively you know whatever your story is i would love to hear the comments um down below